Hi guys, just wanted to share one of the latest features um, from FXGL, which is integration um, of the tiled map editor, which I have open right here. So this is the application um, that allows you to edit various levels, game world, um, maps using tiles. And it also allows you to save them and export them into um, one of the few formats including JSON, which allows us to parse JSON into, um, well, FXGL objects, really. So um, this is a free application, the Tiled Map Editor, um, with, I think, open source. Um, the link will be in the description so you can find um, and download the stuff um, on your machines. Here I've got a sample level which uses these um, tiles or tile sets and um, it creates this small demo of a level. We have two layers, the background layer, which is pretty much everything you can see on the screen, um, and also the platforms layer or object layer, um, which I call platforms. So if I make them invisible as you can see the platforms are actually still there so these platforms are part of the background so the view um, is however in the objects layer we can specify um, certain metadata about positions and width and height um, of various things so here I've selected one of the objects it says the name platform X Y and width height rotation you could also add custom properties. These um, properties, as well as the core ones, will be loaded automatically into the FXGL. So it will be like um, standard Java map um, where you can get values using keys. Right, so um, once you've created something like this, um, you can then export it as JSON. So you click export as and then you select JSON. Um, once you do that, um, so here I've got exactly the same map, which I called test level. You place it under assets JSON. And the next step is to also place the tile sets that you've used here, um, the um, images under textures. These are the two steps to um, export or import into FXGL um, and that will allow you to then use um, use these things in your game. So um, ignore the input. In our initialized game what we have is um, asset loader load JSON. So we load this JSON file um, as tile map which will be parsed automatically and next call is to um, set level from that map once you do that everything will be loaded uh, and parsed into um, something that you will see on the screen um, ignore the player for now or that blue um, rectangle so yeah, we've just loaded this into FXGL environment. And um, it is quite easy to do. So this was the appeal because you can easily change things in the editor and um, basically prototype um, very quickly. So in terms of parsing and how these things are created, uh, we have the background, which is created first using these tile images. Um, they're, assembled, they're assembled into a texture, which is then mapped onto an entity view. And the resulting um, entity is what you see on the screen. As for the object layer, um, for that we have a factory. And this is what, what is going to be the standard FXGL game architecture um, in the future. So you'll have a factory, um, which is the only place um, 
not necessarily the only place, but preferably the only place where entities are created so that you can easily find something and, um, you know, just keep things in one place. Um, you'll have to implement Entity Factory just because um, you can mark it as Entity Factory. And if you want to avoid um, code, then you can use annotations to basically say set this class or instance of this class as the main Entity Factory, which will be used to create uh, your entities. So if you remember, um, the name of each of those objects is platform, as we can see here on the left. And once you have a method with a signature that returns an entity and takes spawn data, you can mark um, that method with an annotation spawns um, by passing the name of the object to be spawned. So platform here means whenever um, the parser encounters a platform object like this, it will call this method to actually instantiate the entity. And what we're doing here, um, if you'll notice that we don't actually have the view. So we've created the entity, we placed it um, at where the spawn data told us to, and the spawn data is parsed from those parameters, those properties, X, Y, width, height, and any other custom properties that you can add um, using the editor. We've created the head box with, again, data from the spawn data, width and height. Uh, when, and we've also added uh, the physics component, which makes it a, a part of the physics world. In our case, um, by default, it will be static um, body type. And here we have um, another method which spawns the player. However, since there is no player in this map, we can spawn um, him manually by just calling get game world spawn and then pass the name of the entity that we'd like to spawn. Right. Um, so yeah, I've added these uh, these values as default to this rectangle, which is um, 40 by 40 um, a square, basically of color blue. And I've changed the default um, of body type um, to dynamic, so I can control player. And just from um, that data, we have this that we can play. So we have our enemy, or actually our player that we can control. Um, these are the platforms uh, which are which have been parsed as actual physics objects, so I cannot go through them or anything. Um, well, the rest is pretty much the same as what we used before, but instead of creating the level manually, we can now use um, this editor, which is very nice. And that's about it. Um, until the next um, version of XGL, I might post um, a few more videos containing or featuring um, some of the things that are new to the new version. And um, yeah, expect it to be very nice because there are several major um, features that are coming up in the, new uh, in the next version. Thanks for watching.